standing at Goodwood Aerodrome, formerly RAF West Hampnet, an air base in southern England. It was from locations such as these that the Royal Air Force launched their Spitfire and Hurricane fighters in an attempt to protect the Allied soldiers on the beaches of Dunkirk, as well as the ships which had set sail to save them from the German war machine. With Stuka's dive bombing and ME-109 fighters assaulting the troops down below, the success, or failure, of the evacuation of Dunkirk would largely hinge on the planes of the Royal Air Force. Join me as Wargaming takes a look back to remember Dunkirk and the warplane battles that soared overhead. May 10th, 1940 the Luftwaffe attack and the largest series of air attacks in history. More than 1,000 bombers, dive bombers, and fighters assault airfields in the Low Countries at dawn. A significant portion of the Dutch Air Force is destroyed. British fighters, such as the Hurricane, counterattack. Many are lost. Meanwhile, the Luftwaffe guard a gigantic German tank army as they discreetly move through a path in the Ardennes Forest. May 14th. Rotterdam, Holland, Luftwaffe fire upon the city center. The next day, the Netherlands surrender to Germany. May 19th, with the German Luftwaffe rapidly advancing through Belgium and France, the remaining RAF squadrons are ordered to evacuate from Belgium. The Allies are surrounded. Planning begins on this day for a larger evacuation of Allied soldiers from the northern coast of France at Dunkirk, known as Operation Dynamo. May 24th, the tanks are ordered to halt from moving to Dunkirk. The Luftwaffe are to finish off the Allied forces by air. May 25th, the Luftwaffe attack Dunkirk for the first time. Considerable damage is done, but the attack does not close the Dunkirk port, nor does it deter the Allied forces from marching towards the town. May 26th, Operation Dynamo begins, with rescue ships making their way to Dunkirk to save the BEF. The Stukas circle and fire down upon the Allied troops below. The Royal Air Force assigns 16 squadrons, carefully prepared for such an occasion, to protect the soldiers at Dunkirk. May 27th, the Luftwaffe drop leaflets, printed in English and French, telling the Allied troops to surrender. The leaflets illustrate the Dunkirk evacuation plan and explain how it won't work. Ironically, the leaflets only strengthen the resolve of the Allied forces to keep moving, and informs those who are unaware of the plan where to go. For one week, the Luftwaffe fight aggressively, destroying docks and harbor facilities with Heinkel HE-111 bombers, sinking rescue ships with Stukas, and annihilating Dunkirk's rail yards with Dornier 17Z bombers. Dogfights of Spitfires and Hurricanes break out against the Luftwaffe. However, the RAF small patrols can't prevent the German firepower erupting above the beaches and further inland. They fight non-stop, the occasional cloudy weather hindering their attacks. After the Allies begin to use the breakwater to evacuate their troops more efficiently, the Germans attack, but do little to no damage on the breakwater itself. May 30th, Germany begins a new operation down south to conquer France. Upon hearing that the Allies continue to successfully escape, the Luftwaffe return, June 1st. Beginning in the early morning, Germany sends five successive raids of 325 Stukas, 160 bomber sorties, 110 ME-110s, and 420 ME-109Es. They destroy a significant number of British warplanes and 17 ships, including two destroyers. June 2nd, Operation Dynamo nearing completion, the Luftwaffe continue to bomb the RAF continue to fight for their soldiers below. The fighting continues the next day, the last day of the evacuation. The RAF carries out 171 reconnaissance missions, 651 bombings, and 2,739 fighter sorties. The final evacuees depart the beach, ending the mission of the evacuation of Dunkirk. Germany's Luftwaffe had intended to eradicate entirely the British expeditionary forces on the beaches of Dunkirk. Their failure to achieve this, consequently letting slip from within their grasp 338,000 Allied soldiers, is a testament to the piloting of the Royal Air Force who endeavored to protect the troops with their own lives. By air, several nations battled in the skies with these fast and powerful planes. From the dive bombing of the Stukas to the aerial battles above the beaches of the northern coast, to remember Dunkirk 
is to remember the fearsome and humbling might of warplanes in the skies of World War II.